coming up on an all-new Localish LA. Get ready to have a spectacular time safely. Everything is literally made out of a pumpkin, even the spaceship. Take a drive through Knights of the Jack with Meg Donnelly. Then get a good scare in the OC and have some frightful family fun. It's a great way to celebrate Halloween this year. Plus, how Dia de los Muertos celebrations are changing this year. They are bigger in scale, in some ways more dynamic. Localish LA starts right now. Hello and welcome to Localish LA. I'm Carl Schmidt coming to you from Olvera Street in downtown Los Angeles, where they are gearing up for Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead celebrations. We'll have more of that to come later, but first, Let's scare up some Halloween fun. Celebs like Dancing with the Stars host Tyra Banks, singer Demi Lovato, plus Christina Aguilera and her mini-me daughter Summer have all been getting into the Halloween spirit by visiting Knights of the Jack, a drive through experience in Calabasas. Local HLA tagged along with American Housewife star Meg Donnelly on her recent visit. Everything is literally made out of a pumpkin, even the spaceship. <laughs> Whoa, that's awesome. I thought it was so incredible. It's definitely a family affair. It's a drive through experience and you don't even have to get out of your car and it's like so magical. Um, there was one spider web that kind of freaked me out. Is that spider web like a production or is it real? But it's more about like the art of the pumpkins. They are so creative. Like they made animals out of them and like aliens. And they had a whole SpongeBob theme one, which like I'm a huge fan of SpongeBob, so. Oh, don't even tell me that's our favorite. Is that little... SpongeBob? Oh, and there was this guy who was like live carving a pumpkin, but it was so detailed and incredible, and that was mesmerizing. He's doing it right now? No way. Whoa. It's really cool that the things like Night of the Jack are happening because especially during this crazy time it's really hard to like get out of your house and do something fun that's in like the Halloween spirit or even just a holiday. Like you're like, how am I gonna celebrate this holiday? So it's really cool. Can we talk American Housewife real quick? Of course. It's coming back, season premiere the 28th. We okay, see that um, episode back. one is called Graduation. Yes. What can you tell us? Graduation was supposed to be our season finale of season four. But when we were filming, um, we had two days left and then um, production got shut down because of the lockdown. And it kind of wraps everything up really nicely from the last season, but then also sets everything up for this season. So there's a lot of shenanigans that happen. It's very stressful, but um, yeah, it's all about her graduating this episode. And um, it's a really, really funny episode and I'm really happy we got to finish it. Don't forget the new season of American Housewife premieres this Wednesday, 8.30, right here on ABC7. Now, if you like your Halloween drive throughs with more tricks than treats, there is one in Orange County that is perfect to get your scare on. Tony Cabrera has all the dark details. That's right, Carl. The urban legends haunt at the OC Fairgrounds is the place for some frightening fun. And kids, you can't watch this one. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Lonzo, close your eyes. Telling you I see something! This was incredibly challenging, something to create. I've never in my million years thought we'd have to create something in the experience of a car. <laughs> this is all stuff that we really like to do and we love the horror and the thrill. I love it. I love anything where we can get out and see something new and see something scary and stuff we've never done before. I think it's great. Hi there, I'm Katrina Carlson, producer of Urban Legends Haunt here at the OC Fair and Event Center where Halloween is not canceled. Keep your ears open, okay? So we decided, hey, how can we do this safe? How can we do this the best way? How can we make this fun, but do it in a car? Let me in. What it is, it's a drive-through Halloween immersive experience with five different show zones. We're taking a lot of precautions on behalf of the audience members. They have to remain in their cars, they have to wear masks, and even the cars are socially distant, approximately eight feet apart. And same thing for behind the scenes as well. Our actors are tested regularly, uh, we're all wearing masks, we're all socially distant, and we're just trying to create the most fun out-of-home experience. We're with our family and 
We're with our foreign team. It's a COVID-friendly uh, scare tonight. Something fun and we get to experience something different. People love Halloween. There's a huge group around it and we love it. We want it to not be canceled. Okay, it's okay. It's okay, we're good now. Scare seekers can take a drive through this Halloween haunt now through November 1st. Thanks, Tony. Now, if you're looking to get your scare on from the comfort of your own home, you may want to check out the Dark Zone Live. It is being billed as the ultimate paranormal virtual experience. The event is hosted on the world's most famous haunted ship, the Queen Mary in Long Beach, where you get to play paranormal investigator. The Dark Zone Halloween event, you get access to the ship and all of the ISO cameras from the comfort of your own home. A lot of the phenomena that's been reported on the ship have been like full-bodied apparitions. People have mentioned feeling like they're being watched or touched. Um, people have captured electronic voice phenomena and it's interactive. So essentially we're creating one of the largest paranormal teams in the world. And if the paranormal world isn't your thing, the Dark Zone doubles as a musical festival with live performances throughout the weekend. One of the biggest traditions at this time of the year is to visit a pumpkin patch. But because of COVID, some of our favorite spots are doing things a little differently. Welcome to Mr. Jack O'Lantern's Pumpkin Patch in Hollywood. This year we uh, are requiring everyone to wear a mask, six feet social distancing, we're limiting it capacity. Um, unfortunately, we're un unable to do all the games we like to do in the past, like pumpkin bowling, bounce house, uh, petting zoo. But uh, you know, we've had to work around it and we've got some creative different games for the kids and different photo stations for the families. Confident. We also came at an hour where we thought it'd be kind of less people. But after reading on the website all the protocols they're taking, we felt pretty confident that it was safe to come. So this year we have curbside pickup as well as delivery options. So customers are now able to go to our website, Mr. Jack Lanterns Pumpkins.com, place an order, contactless pickup, you can pull up to the lot, we'll deliver the pumpkins into the back of your truck or car. And for the delivery standpoint, same thing, you can go on our website, purchase your pumpkins, and uh, we'll have our guys take it to your house. It's pretty cool. We're, we really like the decorating station in the back. We're gonna get some pumpkins decorated. It's been a tough year for families, and my, my thing is, you know, people want to get out, get the fresh air. I know it's been kind of hot in L.A. recently, but, you know, getting outside, you know, getting around pumpkins and the different colors and just not being locked up in the house and kind of getting a sense of normalcy has been, it's been really good for everybody. Now, to celebrate the November 17th release of the New Mutants movie on Blu-ray and digital, I took the time to carve this beautiful, intricate pumpkin. What do you reckon? Okay, maybe I didn't carve it, but I cannot wait for the release of the new Mutants movie on Blu-ray and digital. Coming up on Localish LA. The house is synchronized to Halloween music. An Inland Empire man brings some Halloween cheer to his neighborhood. Plus, a holiday drive through with treats for the whole family. And later... There's like a plethora of like places to visit in LA. Take a tour of some of Hollywood's most iconic horror movie locations. Want more Localish LA? Well, be sure to follow the new Localish LA page on Facebook. Welcome back to Localish LA. We are down here on Olvera Street where they are busy getting ready for Dia de los Muertos and we'll have more on Day of the Dead in just a bit. But first, you know, everything is a bit different this Halloween because of the pandemic. We met up with a man in Highland who's doing his part to make sure families can still celebrate and celebrate safely. The house is synchronized to Halloween music. Um, the lights go on and off with the music. It's not only become a family tradition for us, we hear all the time, it's become a family tradition for the community also. We decided to take the kids out to see the lights for some semi-normalcy. Trying to make it so that people have something to do. You can't go to theme parks, you can't go off to movie theaters, but you can sit in your car, listen to the music on 107.3, or you know, social distance and stand out like other people do and watch the light show. It runs for 30 minutes and then loops through. There's six songs that it goes through. So we used to live right across the street. Now we're like two blocks away, but the pilgrimage is still made at least weekly. Every light bulb is programmable. There are three channels per light bulb and there's about 25,000 light bulbs. So that's 75,000 different colors and 
things that can be controlled every tenth of a second. There's only so much you can do with everything going on at home, so it's keeping the little ones busy here and my five-year-old. When we have the opportunity to get them out for something different, we, we jump on it. It's something to give back, give to the community. It's something I really enjoy doing. It's a passion, it's a hobby. Do it with my family, um, do it as a family tradition, but really also because so many other families have made it their family tradition to come and see these lights. The house is lit up every night from 6.30 to 10 p.m. through Halloween. And for more information, be sure to check out the local HLA Facebook page. And in Pico Rivera, a possible new family tradition has started. So let's take a ride through Happy Halloween LA. Halloween's gonna be awesome because of events like this. And um, you know, it's a great way to celebrate Halloween this year. Fun, movable dinosaurs, clowns, photo booth and candy. It's what Halloween is all about. So this is what we created, Happy Halloween LA. During this COVID time, people want to get out and these Halloween events are made for adults and not for kids. This one is made for the kids. I think it's awesome. My favorite part is probably going to be the carnival because it's like a fun house. Trick or treat! We are not going trick or treating. We're not planning to, but this is our trick or treating. So this is great. I'm so excited to get a chance to be here. We didn't really expect this because this year we were going to kind of downplay in Halloween. But the kids are loving it. We get a chance to spend time together as a family. No interaction, direct interaction. We're all going to be at least 10 feet away from the, from the, uh, the drivers and the cars. They're at the sunroofs, they're at the windows, they're waving, they're, they're, they're in awe, but nobody gets out of their vehicles. It's very safe. Come on down to Pico Rivera Bicentennial Park. Come and see what we're doing here. Happy Halloween! Still ahead on Localish LA. It's a signature part of Los Angeles and our cultural fabric here. Preparing the altars for Dia de los Muertos. Plus, Hair is a real element of horror in our lives. The horror of bad hair. We talk with the cast of this new comedy just ahead on Localish LA. Shoppers in Culver City recently got a surprise visit from the supermarket suite Shopper Chopper. Shoppers were treated to giveaways, including new shopping bags. It's all part of celebrating the return of the popular game show. You can catch an all new episode with host Leslie Jones tonight at eight, right here on ABC7. Welcome back to Olvera Street in downtown LA, where they are busy getting ready for Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead celebrations. It is a celebration to remember friends and family who have passed. There are public altars going up all over Southern California. And if you're looking to build your own, well, Olvera Street is a great place to come shop and get exactly what you need. Also in downtown, Grand Park is hosting its annual Dia de los Muertos celebration in partnership with Self Help Graphics. Now, this is usually one of the larger events in the area, but this year they're making some changes to make sure everyone can celebrate safely. Grand Park opened in 2012, and Dia de los Muertos was one of the key programs in the park's first 30 days of programming. It's grown over the years from 10 altars in its first days to altar installations with 50 plus, 60 plus uh, altars and commissioned artworks, to events with concerts and live performances. This year, because of the COVID pandemic, we've made some adjustments to the program. We've reduced down the number of altars. They are bigger in scale, in some ways more dynamic. We made that determination that it was safer for viewers to be able to view large-scale works rather than small ones. We started partnering with Self Help Graphics a number of years ago, and it was the beginning of a beautiful partnership. Self Help Graphics has been here for 47 years on the east side. When Self Help Graphics started Dia de los Muertos, uh, we were the only ones in town celebrating. Uh, and so people would have to come to the east side to get that experience. Dia de los Muertos is a, a tradition that is a fusion of indigenous spiritual practices and uh, Catholic practices that came into, into what is now Mexico. And the, the altar itself, uh, as part of the Day of the Dead practice, is to honor loved ones who have passed. For individuals, altars will have um, items from that person's past, from their life, photographs, uh, whatever is emblematic of that 
that person. But here in LA, in the way that this has evolved at Self Help Graphics, we have it as a very public experience. This year at uh, Grand Park for Noche de Ofrenda, we're really uh, wanting to take this opportunity this year I think, to bring forward some of these social justice issues that are really at the forefront in this really extraordinary year. Dia de los Muertos, it has always been a hallmark signature event of Grand Park because it's a signature part of Los Angeles and our cultural fabric here. As we've seen this year, most annual Day of the Dead events have been modified or canceled. However, many celebrations will go on virtually. The Los Angeles Public Library will celebrate the holiday with songs, stories and crafts in English and Spanish, streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Enjoy folkloric dance, mariachi music, Day of the Dead art and a bilingual religious ceremony live on Facebook, hosted by Forest Lawn. And if you're out and about, the city of Santa Monica will host Dia de los Muertos with larger-than-life installations by Mexican artist Ricardo Seltero in nine locations throughout the Third Street Promenade and Santa Monica Pier. For details on these Day of the Dead celebrations, go to abc7.com forward slash localish. And for the first time in its long and colorful history, the Pasadena Tournament of Roses is getting in on the Dia de los Muertos festivities. At the Tournament of Roses, we are all about tradition, festivities, and flowers. And that's exactly what Dia de los Muertos is all about. We wanted to take that connection and celebrate uh, Dia de los Muertos for the first time with our art competition. Uh, we're inviting uh, all kids uh, to participate. Uh, you can create an ofrenda or an altar. You could also decorate a calavera, a circus skull, create floor arrangements, make a traditional costume, paint the face. Um, anything that you want to do to celebrate the, the traditions, we also believe that Dio de los Muertos will be um, a great way to elevate artists uh, as we do every year for the parade in a way that ties into the rich culture of, of Latinos in, in Southern California and beyond. There is still time to send in your artwork. Submissions are due by October 28th, and all participants must be between the ages of 4 and 18. Up next on Localish LA. Hair is a real element of horror <laughs> in our lives. The tale of a wicked weave. We're talking with the cast of Bad Hair. And take a tour of some of Hollywood's most famous horror houses, if you dare. <laughs> Miss something on Localish LA? Check out the new Localish LA Facebook page to catch the stories from tonight's show and so many other ways to live like a local. One of the best and safest ways to spend this Halloween season is with a good scary movie. On the red carpets, Rashumba Williams talked to the cast of the new Hulu horror comedy, Bad Hair. As young black girls, you are taught that hair that's straight and easy to deal with is good. <laughs> and like the hair yeah. that usually comes out of our heads is bad. Uh, Anna, who, who does your hair? No one? Me? Now, the battle between the good hair and the bad hair, we all grew up with it. It's a battle between what we think we're supposed to be and who we are sometimes, and we slowly sacrifice and chip away at who we are. It just totally took me back to my childhood, especially the scenes with the hair salon. It's like the younger people coming up who get to see so many Black women rocking their natural hair don't know the version of bad hair that we grew up with. It's such an unlearning you have to do. We just lean a little bit more rock than urban here. Justin Simeon, who wrote it and directed it, um, had this idea to do a hair killer film, which was kind of popular in Japan. You're weaving hair into your scalp. You don't even know where that hair is coming from. Not only where it's coming from, but what it may be infused with. You know, in some parts of India, a woman's hair is her most prized possession. Hair is a real element of horror <laughs> in our lives. You know, it should be something that is incredibly individualistic and, and, and totally up to her, and it is not in this country. This one is fun, like, so you laugh more. It's got this, you know, some, some scary, suspenseful elements, but it's also funny at the same time. I know it's a horror film, but I laughed hysterically watching it. Bad Hair is streaming on Hulu right now. Living here in Los Angeles, we're pretty used to seeing film and television productions around town. And many of your favorite Halloween movies were shot right here, and you can still see some of their iconic and famous locations. There's like a plethora of like places to visit in LA 
that have been filming locations for horror movies, horror series, and it's just all about like finding them and then visiting them. It's actually like a historical house now. That's not the original location, but they had to move the house due to the fact that it was gonna be bulldozed so that they could build a hospital there. It looks very different from what it looked like in the original, which was more of like a dilapidated house. It's actually not that far from the Michael Myers house. There's a family that lives there, but they're so cool about having people come to take pictures there. They actually have pumpkins that you can take and sit on the cement pillar and take that iconic photo that Jamie Lee Curtis took as Lori Strode. It's a craftsman style house, but what's so incredible about this house and why I love it so much is it just looks sinister. It's just imposing. It's a very dark, dark exterior house. Even on like a beautiful sunny day, it's one of those houses that you walk by and you kind of get like a chill. It's one of the most iconic houses in all of, all of film. Like you see that house, you see it with the red door, though it was not a red door in the first film. It was actually a big door. I think people are desperately looking to do something this Halloween season, but I think this is great because you get to go visit these locations of films that are so important to so many people within, you know, the genre and in film in general. Another famous frightening location in LA, the American Horror Story Murder House. And now you're getting a chance to take a look inside. The homeowners are hosting a live three-day event Halloween weekend. It'll feature a live stream from cameras inside the home. Some lucky ticket buyers may also get a chance to spend the night in the basement of the home or take part in the paranormal investigation. Tickets are on sale now. Visit the Localish LA Facebook page for more information. If you'd like to check out some other infamous locations throughout Los Angeles, Downtown LA Walking Tours is offering a Haunted Tales tour that starts at the Pico House. Los Angeles Magazine also has a self-guided audio tour of haunted downtown spots that includes stops at the Hotel Alexandria and Hotel Cecil. Be safe this Halloween, remember those we lost on Day of the Dead, and then be sure to exercise your right to vote. Check out these special vote labels on these Jones soda bottles. Just another reminder to make a plan to vote, either by mail, in advance, or on election day. And a big thank you to Jones Soda for these Halloween treats. They made us special bottles with local HLA labels. How cool is that? Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. Don't miss an all-new episode of Localish LA on Sunday at 6.30 on ABC7. Or click on the subscribe button and watch Localish LA anytime.